Simple question, whose side are you on? Let's speak to uh, social commentator Mal Fletcher. Mal, I'm sure for you it's far more nuanced than, than this, but whose side are you on? <laughs> Good morning, David. Well, I'm not on a side because it is nuanced. I think that there's two issues, and they're separate issues but related. The first one relates to the lawsuit, which you just talked about, which the Duchess, you know, is taking with the newspaper. The second one is about the general press media treatment of the Duchess, and that's the main thrust of Prince Harry's complaint. I think on the first point, arguably, we have a clear example of invasion of privacy. That's for the court to decide. But there is, I think, probably little public good to be served in publishing a personal letter like this. There may be public interest, but that's more to do with gossip than anything else. But on the second point, which I think is more important, the prince's concerns about general treatment of his wife, you could argue that if the royals want to use their position as a currency to promote causes close to their heart, that is, causes that don't form part of their official duties, they may need to accept that stories will circulate about aspects of the behaviour. So you mentioned the environmental concerns that Harry was talking about, and then he's taking private jets. There is a public good to be served in making known his publicly stated views and his own behaviour on that very issue. But I think it comes down to making sure that the tone overall is constructive and that we, the public, don't turn the royal family completely into another version of Downton Abbey. Well, there is a, a, a public interest, isn't there, in the press asking questions. And whereas perhaps some of the criticism has been unfair, they they did refuse to allow uh, um, uh, pictures of their son, Archie's. Remember the, the christening this summer? They wouldn't allow pictures there. That upset the press. They didn't reveal the God, who the godparents were. There was the revelations of the £2.5 million of taxpayers' money spent on uh, refurbishing Frogmore College, their home in Windsor. And as you say, the certain uh, allegations of hypocrisy around the environment, all these various issues, the, the press, whether you think they're, right, they, uh, they're justified or not, the questions do need to be asked. They're not above scrutiny, are they? No, and it is natural that many people will take an interest where the royals are concerned because they are to a degree public property. I mean, their, their position of privilege is maintained by public goodwill and the public purse. And if you invite the world to your wedding, you touched on this earlier, you might expect the world to have an interest in what comes next. If you're going to engage too with social media, as many younger royals do, there will be times when people feel that they know you better than they actually do. So this is a problem that goes back before Princess Diana. It's the problem the royals have with public perception. That said, if we're not careful, we do treat the royal family as a soap opera. We we have to remember that a wedding is not a marriage. We can't be expected to be invited into the family circle for every little thing. So we shouldn't try to play psychoanalyst with every foible of royal behaviour. There is a line, and I, I don't see this, this discussion stopping any time soon. If it's not Prince Harry, it'll be somebody else, especially among the, the emerging generation of royals. Do we need to make an exception, though, for this couple because of what Harry went through with his mother's death? We need to be sensitive to it. I think, yes, they're, they're, if you mean by exception, are we especially sensitive? Yes, we are. Uh, I think we have been since we saw those two boys walking in their, with their mother's coffin through the streets. That, that stirred the nation. Um, but I think the other issue that's coming into this is that, and the press is always talking about this, the line between celebrity and royalty. And, you know, we have one marriage partner, Megan, who's a very successful uh, self-promoter in terms of her, me her actri acting career. And uh, now she's coming, trying to live within the constraints of royalty. That's very difficult for someone coming from the outside. It was difficult enough for Princess Di, who was actually raised in, in aristocratic circles anyway. So it's very difficult for this young woman. So we have to take that into account. But I think that um, Prince Harry is never going to be completely happy with the, the treatment that his wife receives because of what happened to his mother. And we're just going to have to live with that. And I wonder how this will be received by the general public. Do you think people will have sympathy for him and, and think that, yes, the papers have gone too far this time around, I wonder? I don't think so. I, I, it's not as if the papers have been on a... Con I don't think they've been on a concerted attempt to bring down Megan in the public's eyes. I think they've been trying to colour in the blanks where Megan's concerned. Now, having said that, I think that it can go too far very quickly. And the letter, I think, was a, a st overstepping the mark. But that's a separate issue to the general treatment of these two in the media. I do think that the media needs to show restraint and, and uh, confine itself a little bit to these issues of inconsistency. So that if, if something is declared by these young royals in the causes they support, and then they don't support it with their actions, that has a, a, 
a public good component to it. Very interesting. Good to talk to you in here. And as always, Mal, thank you very much. So, should commentator Mal Fletcher.